I really hope that you liked the beginning music. I thought it was kind of dull that people watching Archived had to just sit here and twiddle their thumbs while things were going on. Hey, Tammy Valley. So super glad you guys could join me today. I have my sweatshirt, sorry, hanging from the back here. <laughs> There's a big brown box. Which side? This is a big brown box over here. There it is. And you're going to hear my cat skittering about because O'Malley thinks that this box that came in with um the stuff in that I ordered is his new play toy and his little like hangout house. So he just, he's like a newborn kitten running, running, jumping into that box and stuff. Hi, Eileen and Tracy and Cynthia. So glad you guys could come. We're going to do these really cool DIY envelopes. So forever, I was always like, I make cards and make cards and make cards. I don't buy my envelopes and my like card bases and all that like together. Well, I sort of do. I have some, but I, I just typically grab my card stock and just go, right? Which is what a lot of us do. So then we're like, oh, well, now we want to send this card to somebody and we don't know how to send it because we don't have an envelope. Um. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. I, <laughs> I D, I'm so excited too. I'm really glad that you guys could come and hang out with me because this is going to be the last last live stream for um, probably about a week. But never fear, I've got a couple of things that I'm going to be throwing up here and there um, while I'm on vacation. It's my staycation, so you guys don't have to worry about that. Hi, Janet. Welcome from Indiana. So welcome. I'm from Wisconsin, so if you want to put down where you're from, that'd be awesome. We have Cynthia from Australia. Oh, it's so cool that you guys come from all over the world. I love it. Um, what other? What else do I want to say about that? So join us after we're done here. If you create some really fun envelopes, and we, you could get crazy wacky with the envelopes. I'm just going to show you how to make them today. You could decorate them, stamp them, emboss them. You could really go nuts. So I'm hoping to see some really fun creative envelopes from you guys after I show you how to do it. So we're all going to meet over at Quality Crafts on Facebook. I would really love for you guys to meet me over there and look for the album that I post right after we're done here and post what you made with me today or what you're going to make later on because maybe you're watching this archived and you didn't do it with us today. That's fine. The album will be there, so no worries. It's a non-commitment, drama-free group that is really full of inspiration. And if you want to take it a step further and fuel the passion that my channel is, where we try to reach all the beginner crafters and let you guys know that you can do it, and then just post exciting, really fun, and useful techniques that you guys can use in your own crafting, join me on Patreon and become a patron. And then your name will be mentioned in some of my videos and then you'll be put into the private group where we have more uh, weekly sketches and challenges and contests and prizes and things and it's really fun so what i'd like to invite if you guys can to do that and then also i have a um budget friendly store which we just uploaded digis into it's so fun i should have just pulled out some of my digis but i didn't think of it offhand i'm like brain on envelopes today so if you want to see the digis they're at qualitycrafts.com Scroll down to the little um, icon that says Digis and click on that and you'll see all of them. Now be careful when you're purchasing Digis because some of them are in there as line art for you to color and some of them are in there as pre-colored. So if you want to color them, make sure you're not buying the already pre-colored ones. Hi Pamela and Dee's here and CK Kid. Wendy Short, hi from whoa, Croydon Kempton Park, South Africa. Woo! We got South Africa and Australia and where else? who else? Kansas. Wow, guys, this is awesome. Hi, Eileen and Monica. So if you're watching us archived, the people that I'm talking to are here with us live. There's a live chat where um, I can interact with people. Hi, Kelly. So if um, you want my attention like Kelly just got it, put a little at sign and then my name, Jen Evers, right after it. And it'll bump it up in orange. But if you really want to get my attention, there is something called a super chat. And that's where you can make a one-time donation to my channel, which would super help us out. So I'm always very appreciative of that and grateful. Um, it's right under where you type your little comment. It looks like a little um, money sign in a little box. And then right to the left of that, it's a little smiley, um, smiley face. Oh my gosh, so we've got people from the UK. Um, Ireland, you saw, yep, Norway. Wow, hi, Alina. Hi, Sandy, Mildred, Donna. 
Oh, it's so exciting. So if you're watching us archived and you don't want to listen to the blah, 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 I get it. Just take that little button and toggle it down into where we start making the uh, project. And I always start at five minutes after the hour. So if you're new here and you're wondering why I'm blathering on and talking to my friends, <laughs> that's the whole point. We have a community built family around quality crafts and that are those are the people that show up and i like to interact with so hi jane brown and tarita from oregon whoop whoop she gave me some hearts thank you so much in alina hello um yes oh blah blah i'm just blathering on aren't i we start at five minutes after so if you're wondering when when game time is that's when game time is five minutes after now if you're coming in for the technique on a sunday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m central standard time same thing there will start at 205 promptly i do like to respect your time and thank you for making time to be with us today cheers guys cheers alina she says the blah blah is awesome <laughs> the blah blah is why everyone is here right we like to talk to each other and interact and that makes it just that much more fun and that much more close family right hi sharon you found us yay hearts for you Hi from Ireland, Rita, hello. And Janine. Oh, no zitchin. Just downloaded Digi's Hippo, Owl, and Parrot. Oh, thank you, Cynthia, that's so cool. Well, we've got one more minute. Let me see if I've got my Digi's laying to the side of me here. I'll show you guys a few. So I'm definitely not, I don't have them all here. I don't know, maybe I do. This has been a work in progress and we're still, um, I'm still working on getting more out and that kind of stuff. But here was the first one that set it all off and this is the cow. And um, I keep teasing you guys with this because uh, I know you guys wanna know how to make these wobbles. So stick around this weekend. Um, even though I'll be on vacation, there's going to be a really cool hop going on and it's five after we have to start, but I do want to get this out. There's going to be a really cool loopy hop going on this weekend. Then I'm going to show you how to make this wobble, okay? We're going to be using the frog. So here's the frog, frankly frog. Okay, so I really, really would like you guys to do that hop because the prizes are amazing. All kinds of um, stamp sets, physical stamp sets from Peachy Keen Stamps and Newton Nooks and unity stamps and then she's throwing in a stamp helper which you guys i'm not going to tell you the brand because some people get you know up in arms about that but yes tune in this weekend it's going to go live on saturday morning you guys are not going to want to miss this let's get started i have three different size envelopes here but here's the thing you need the card that you want to cover and that's how we're going to create the actual envelope they are not going to be perfect envelopes just keep in mind that we are artists <laughs> these are going to be handmade mootastic cynthia thank you so much after i start get started going here we make a few of them i'll show you some more of the digis for those of you guys who are like what are you guys talking about so if you have regular a2 size cards which is similar to like what we just made in one of the videos recently was this from sunday i think it was sunday Anyway, this is an A2 size card, except for his little ears are sticking off the edge, okay? But let's just say it is. So what we're going to do with this to figure out what size paper we need is we're going to measure it diagonally from corner to corner. It's about seven inches. You're going to want to add on one inch, so eight inches. So instead of seven, it's going to be eight. And then for the envelope around it, it's going to be just a square. So if it's seven, you go up one to eight and you make a square, eight by eight, okay? If it's six, you go up to seven and you make a square, seven by seven. If the card is three inches, you go up to four, you make a square, four by four. So this one is seven. We're gonna go up to eight and we're gonna make a square, eight by eight. And I have my trimmer right next to me. It's gonna be just, it's gonna be a bear to try to get this all in here. And I wanna use a trimmer that actually cuts really well so let me talk to you a moment about the kind of paper you want this is a whole pack full of paper i think there's like 180 sheets i don't even think it says yeah right here it is let me bring it up 
It has 180 sheets in it. If you ever see one of these that has 180 sheets in it, it's not cardstock. It's a very flimsy pattern paper, and that's what you want. You want something that you're going to be able to get over the top. Now, if you want to do a really heavy envelope because you're doing something fancy or their invitations, feel free, but I think this works the best, which means that if all you have is printer paper at your house, printer paper works just as good. And then you could take this white printer paper and you can stamp anything you want on it. You can make it match your card completely and all that good stuff. But we're going to start out with one of these. And I think that this sheet actually matches this card pretty well. So you can make your pattern paper match your cards, which is a really fun idea. And what did I say the measurement was for an A2 size card? Eight inches. So an eight by eight square. I'm gonna cut this off screen here, eight by eight. You're gonna find out that this is just, just such a simple thing, you guys, so simple. You're gonna run out and you're gonna just make envelopes like mad, mad people. Like crazy people, turn it. I'm losing my I'm losing my paper. It's falling in the garbage. <laughs> okay, let me see how far I can bring this out here without showing you all my yuck on the side. Okay, put it in the, as like in a diamond shape towards you, and take your card and plop it right in the middle. Now here's the here's the part where I say it's not going to be perfect, like machine made ones um, that you purchase with your paper. You're gonna want to move this back and forth try to center it basically so i'm looking at how far is it away from the set the sides here and how far is it away from the sides here if you got it up here and you're super close to this corner and you've got lots of room then you want to move it down a little bit so that it's very centered okay so this is the part that's gonna either you're either gonna go with it and you're gonna love it or you're gonna be like this is making me absolutely crazy don't let it make you crazy. This is really, really simple. Now you're just gonna lift up the bottom and give a crease and then fold in the sides. Do you see where his little ears are going off? That's not a big deal. We're gonna make this envelope so that it fits him. Bring this side in and I always make to see that these points come together even if it makes my envelope just that scotch bit lopsided, I don't care because it'll look good from here. And then you're going to bring the top down. Now, I don't want to squish his ears, so I'm going to make sure that when I bring this top down, that I go just far down enough that I'm not going to punch off his ears there and then give it a little fold. Okay, but we're not done. Oh, my! your first live, Mandy. Hearts for you. Hi, Cynthia, Kathleen and Donna. Okay, then you're gonna open it back up. I never said that you had to have scissors and you don't, but if you wanna do this part, which I like to do, we're gonna go ahead and cut these little corners off. Now we're gonna go just to the outside of that pressed line and cut in, okay? And just to the outside of that and cut in. And we're gonna do that for all four of them. Now when you're cutting these, you're gonna totally notice that they are not, it's not perfect because some of my little triangles are bigger than others. Don't sweat it because once you get your card into it and everything, nobody's gonna even notice because this is the part that typically gets thrown away. Yeah, right? Am I right? People throw this stuff away. So don't sweat it if it's not perfect. It's no big deal. So I'm gonna throw those little bits away. And then I'm going to bring in two of my corners. And I said you could use a bone folder, but I'm just using my fingers right now. And bring the bottom up. And this is where you're going to put your glue, right on the inside here. Do not put it on the inside here because you'll accidentally glue here. And you'll put it up and you'll glue it shut right here. Don't ask me how I know that. So if you want this to stay together really well, use sticky tape or wet glue. Otherwise, you can also use... Um, ATG and whatever you guys have handy. I'm just going to use wet glue and I'm not going to use very much of it because I don't want it to, the paper to buckle and stuff. But I think wet glue is a very good way to get these to glue down and stay down and be permanently adhered. All right. 
Let's slip our card back in. I got some 3D elements, so I want to make sure that my whole card gets in. And then look, I've got space for his ears. And then this is going to come down like that. Now you're going to want to put glue on here when you finally send it. But for right now, there we go. We've got a perfectly good envelope made specifically for that card. Now, if you've got envelope, um, not envelope, address labels, here's when you want to pull out your little address labels. Especially if you've got a lot going on, if you've got patterns or floral patterns and stuff like that, and just put your labels on here. Your return label, then your address label for whoever's going to get it. And then all you have to do is mail it. Super cool, right? Let's do another one. So you're like, yeah, Jen, okay, that's super cool because that was an A2 size card and a lot of my, si my cards are A2 size cards. But what if I made a little card? Okay, let's try a little card. Actually, let's try something that's not even a card. Look at this. This is one of those little notebooks that we made way back when that, you know, I struggled with, but we got through it. Oh, we got through it together. <laughs> let's see if we can make one out of this. So we're going to measure diagonally, right? It is three and a half. So we're going to go up one inch. That means four and a half. So we need a square that's four and a half by four and a half. I'm going to go ahead and cut a regular piece of printer paper for this one at four and a half by four and a half. Four and a half by four and a half. Now, don't get me wrong, you guys. I have the envelope punch board and I love it. Love, love, love it. But when I'm in a hurry, this is faster for me. <laughs> oh, Chris, I made it. Hello. Hello. Greek summer. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, they're not perfect. Did you notice when I cut out the little triangles, every single one of those triangles was not the same size. Totally not perfect. Okay, so we're going to put this one. You can do it either way. doesn't matter. I'm just going to do this the long way. Why not? Um, I need my glue. Okay, so let's go ahead and we got that centered. It looks good. We're going to bring this bottom part up. Now, this is much thicker than a card. Do you see that? Much thicker than a card. No problem. It should work out just fine. Bring in our sides. And you can always make sure that you're not putting this in too snug so that you've got room for these. The reason why we cut off the corners is to make, um, make room so it's not real bulky. Okay, and then bring this one down. All right, let's open it back up and cut off our corners. Now look, the corners are not the same, which means it's not perfect. And that's okay. This is the part that you can skip if you don't want to cut corners, <laughs> literally. Um, then don't. Don't cut the corners. Leave the bulk in there. I just think it makes a nicer presentation of the envelope itself if you cut these off. And like I said, go, go more towards the outside of those score lines rather than the inside. Because once you fold it, you'll understand why. And these are going to come in. Now remember, this is thicker, so don't squish this all the way down. Okay, and this one's going to come up over the top. This one's going to not look as perfect, for sure. I'm going to put a little bit there to make sure that this stays down. And then I'm going to put a little bit on this side, those sides. So now look at this one. I've got this hanging out there because this doesn't go all the way up not gonna sweat it probably won't even notice that when we're completely done because I'm going the long way I could have went the short way and then we'll see if this fits in here and it does and then you fold it down and there you have it an envelope that fits that just right Ta -da! super cute all right so do we still have naysayers in the group like, oh yeah, that's great, you know, because both of those cards were either square or rectangle, Jen, that's perfect. Good for you. Thumbs up. <laughs> I 
Cheers. See, D? It did look just like yours. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, okay, what if I have a round card? It still works. Well, let's check it out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't work. Oh, hey, Barb. First time in the chats. That's so awesome. We're glad to have you. This is a three inch circle. So what do we do? We add on a, an extra inch. So we make it four. So it's going to be a four by four. Let's do this one white also because, you know, it's a Christmassy, Christmassy one. And we want four by four. Make sure that I've got this one cut four by four. Let's see if this works for round ones. I'm not sure. Three and I did four. Did I do four? I don't think this one's going to work. Although it did when I was practicing. Dun, dun, dun. Three, four. Let me double check. Double, double check. We might have to add two inches if it's circular. So if we don't have a four by four, let's try a five by five too, just to make sure. And you know what? And I have um, 12 by 12 paper as well because some of my cards are really big. So let's do a five by five. I think that's going to cover it better. Something about it not being completely rectangular that you have to add an extra amount. Let's try this one. Because that four, let's, well, just for, just for shoots and giggles, let's try this because I know it's not going to be big enough. See how tiny it is? That, let's try the five by five. So if you've got a circular one, do the extra inch, but do extra two inches. Let's try this. This should work. Bring up your bottom. Here's one of the tricks that I tried to do is when you bring up your bottom, make sure that this arrow, this corner right here lines up with that corner. Not that you have to, but that helps me. All right, and let us bring in this side and meet those two points. This is going to work, guys. So if you're doing a circular one, add two. Might want to make a note of that. I will, too. Make a note that circles, you need to add two inches. I could have swore I did a big, big circle one while I was practicing. But you live and learn, right? So let's go ahead and put... Let's leave the bulk in this one and see what happens. And we're not going to cut corners on this one. We're just going to go ahead and glue it down. Make sure that you're looking to um, where you put your glue, too, so that when you glue these down, that you don't accidentally glue your envelope shut. This paper is really thin, so that I don't feel like you, really, you really need to cut off that bulk. But if you look at the top now, if we fold this down... You have that extra lip right there that you have to be careful when you're putting your card in there. Okay? So it's up to you whether or not you want to cut that part off. But now that totally fits. So circles, extra two inches. Rectangles, A2 size cards, that square cards, add one extra inch. I think we should do some more, don't you? Heck, we might find some we might find something else that we need to change. Let's do, so we've done an A2 size card, we've done a round card, we've done a, a small card. Uh-oh, where's our small card? There he is. So we've done an A2, that's this one. This one that was oblong but really thick, that worked. This was a circle one. Add two inches. Okay, let's try something else. Alrighty, let's do, okay, I've got my bear card here, but let's measure this up. This bear card would totally fit into that envelope, and we did that envelope at 8x8 eight eight because the diagonal of that A2 size card was 7. We added on an extra inch, so we made it 8x8 eight eight and it totally fit. So if you've got a shape card, measure your shape card up by, um, what kind of envelope that maybe you've made before. Let's just, yeah, because when I measure him, 
He's a six. Let's try it out. He is actually a six inch. So if we go seven by seven, let's see if seven by seven will cover him. Let's pick out a fun piece of paper for him. Oh my gosh, I love these dots. Let's try seven by seven and see if he fits in that a little bit smaller of a one. I'll make all, I'll tell you what guys, I'll make all the mistakes here so that when you make yours, you won't have to worry about making mistakes or wasting your paper. Good deal, right? So let's try him out. Let's see if we can make this one work. Looks like pretty much like it, like it will. So I'm just lining that point up with that point to see if maybe I can't get this to be. Nope. Look at that. It doesn't work. So if you've got a shape card, remember I said that it would fit and he would totally fit in this one. Measure your shape cards as if they were a complete rectangle. Look, at it'll fit in that one. A shape card like this, if you're using that template, just so, so you know if you do the bare, 8x8 eight eight works best. Okay, so there. We're going to save this one. We're not going to get rid of it because this might cover another one. Let's try a really big card. Let's try this one. I don't know, do I have enough paper in a 12 by 12 to to like do an envelope for one that's this big? How big is this card? This card is a six by six. Ooh, good one because a lot of you guys do six by six cards or five and a half by five and a half inch cards, correct? I know some of you guys do. This one is, I, I'm gonna round up just because it's not exactly perfect. It's almost eight, it's about eight and a half. So if we go up nine and a half, that supposedly work, right? Let's try it out. Nine and a half. Let's pick out a piece of paper for this one too. I don't know if we have anything purple in this book though. Pretty sure we don't have anything purple. What else would go? Dots. Michelle said dots. Like these dots. She's a dot lover. I know that about her. <gasps> Those are dots too. Look at that. I wish this one had purple. It doesn't though. I could go with the dots. What do you guys think? No purple. Or the floral. Dots or floral for this guy. I think we'll go dots. So let me just do that again. I think it was eight and a half. Eight and a half. So let's go nine and a half and see if that works. I have my doubts now. We won't go away until we figure it out. Nine and a half by nine and a half. done I don't know how many cards trying to figure this this out I'm glad I grabbed a plethora of sizes of cards just to make sure we didn't walk away being sad all right this one also has these big pearls so I'm going to make sure that I've got a little bit of give by not yanking this all the way up until it's super super tight but just by folding it over gently so I have a little bit of an edge underneath there and I'm going to try to line up those, line up these points as best I can and then fold these over. Looks like this is going to work. And this was a really big one, a really big square. It's looking pretty good. It feels a little awkward, especially when you have um, big, I should probably make a box kind of a card to put this in because these are so big, but let's just try it. Let's just go with it. This one I am going to cut the corners off of.
Again, not perfect. All the corners are not the same size, but it's not a problem. As we found out, if you're new, trust us. We know what we're talking about. Hi, Eva. Alrighty. Now what I like to do is fold these two sides in and then bring this up to see if that's the way I want to do it. Like some of you guys are like, oh, I could see those things showing up and I didn't like that. Maybe you want to put this down first and put these over the top. Is that a nicer look? You know, then you're not seeing two different things. Then go ahead and do it that way. If you bring them in and you put this up and you're like, that looks funny. There's too many points exposed here then put this one up and glue it down on there. So put a little bit of glue down the edges and then glue them down. I didn't quite leave enough room for this big bobble here. If you're gonna do one that's got a lot of big things like this one does, I would suggest doing a box card or getting some really heavy cardstock. Especially if you've got things that are sticking up like that. That's pretty big. You don't want that to rip and just your whole, your envelope will not make it through the mail like that. Just saying. But just for the sake of this video, this is how we're going to do it. So that works, right? And I glued it down with the card in this time to make sure that I had enough room for those things. I might just hand this, hand give this card. And in that case, it doesn't really matter, right? You can have any kind of envelope you want, even if there's a little bump here. Let's see if we can get that bump to go down. Just that's right where, where that bobble is sticking up. There we go. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there because I want that point sticking down. And then we can fit it in there. Look at that. Very cool. All right. Let's put that one to the side. I've got at least one more that I want to do. And then if you guys have any questions or comments or you want me to try something else, otherwise we could um, do some stamping on one and just create one that's got some cool looks on it. A box card envelope. I could if um, I were practiced in making them. But I don't honestly, um, I can't just pull a box card envelope out of my head, out of my brain right now. Because my brain is on what I prepared for today. <clears throat> but if you want to see how to do a box card envelope, I could certainly do a video on that. I'll make, a, I'll make a note. Make a note. Box card envelopes. Those are fun too. I don't have much of a call to use those, although once in a while I do make a kind of a big card. I like these cards because these fold completely fat, flat and you can mail them. That's really cool. So if you want to know how to make those, stick around because Saturday we have a hop coming up. Now this is a huge circle. And what did we learn when we made circles? We figured we added an extra two inches, right? So this is a six and a half. I wondered if 12 by 12 paper was going to cover this big of a card. This is a six and a half, so we would go to eight and a half. Yeah, eight and a half by eight and a half. Even a regular size cardstock or a regular size piece of printer paper should technically be able to cover this. But let's do so six and a half, seven and a half, eight. Let's do an eight and a half by eight and a half and see what we get. Should be able to find something in here that goes. Ooh, that goes. That's cool. Let's do that one. What did I say? Eight and a half. So we're going to go square. Eight and a half by eight and a half. Let's test out the theory. And some uh, patterns are going to fold better than other patterns. Some patterns are going to show that it's off a little and some are not. So, all right. I don't know if this is going to work. This is a really big circle. Let's try it out though. We did two inches bigger, but look at this. I really do not think this is going to cover. Holy Hannah. It's not. 
So gosh, depending on how big your circle is, you really got to go big. So let's go six and a half. We went out two. Let's go out three. Six and a half, seven and a half. Wait a minute. Did I include the bumps? I think I did. Let's go out nine and a half and see if that works. Nine and a half by nine and a half. I'm pretty sure I have another one of those papers. Let's see if we can find it again. See, so I will make all of the mistakes here so you guys will not waste your paper. That's a big card. Let's do this one. It kind of matches that pink on the card. I like it. Nine and a half by nine and a half. I'm going to go ten. You know what? Let's go ten by ten just to make sure that we have enough coverage. I can cut it down if you feel that it'll work. We'll go 10 by 10. So apparently the larger your circle, the more you have to add on to make it sure that it covers. So I want 10 by 10. Is that gonna, I think it'll work. Let's try it out. This one's got a couple of doodads on it too. This will work. Looks like it's gonna work. So you want to make sure when you're folding this over that these sides match up too here. That'll help you be a little bit straighter. I'll show you on this side too. That when you when you put your points together here in the middle, you also want this to be flat on the on the end, on the bottom. That's just barely gonna make it. Just barely. And I went 10 by 10. 10 by 10. Holy Hannah. Make sure you give a lot of extra room if it's a circle. I think what I would do, if I were you, and I was doing really, really big circle. I don't do very many circle cards. I don't know about you. But I would take a 12 by 12 sheet, and I would make sure that I have two corners that go all the way around it before I did my cutting. This one's going to be just barely enough to get over the top of that. But it'll still work. So let's go ahead and cut off the corners. So if you're like me and you make predominantly a two size cards, this is not, this is going to be a piece of cake for you. But if you're making all kinds of wonky, weird cards, then you're going to want to keep in mind some of the things that we've learned here today about how to cover the oddly shaped cards, especially like my templates of shape cards like these. Go ahead and do these as an A2 if you know that it's going to fit. That was an eight by eight. So if you're looking for that one, for sure. Anything that's square or rectangle, that seems to work out just fine. Here, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this one. Okay, so how come that didn't work for the circle? Oh, this one covers up a lot better. There we go. I had an extra little bit of room because I didn't push my card all the way to the bottom. That's better. Now I have a little bit of extra here, but that's okay. I'm thinking now, how come that didn't work out? Because if I were to put, if I were to put this on a square, right? This is the square. What's the rectangle of this one? Let's check it out. It's about nine and a quarter. So you'd go 10 and a quarter. Well, there we go. There we have it. If this was a square, if this circle was a square, the diagonal of it would be a well, about nine. And I went 10 for this one, so that, that works. Right, 10? Let me double check. Did I go 10 or did I go 10 and a half? No, I did 10. 10 by 10. Sometimes I think I'm losing my mind, and then I find it's still right here. All right, I'm going to fold these in and see how I want this to look. That looks pretty cool. If I fold them in and put this one down, nope, don't like that as much. I'm gonna put this one down and then fold these guys over. Yeah, that makes more sense. A little bit of glue because like I said, this is not perfect and this side is very, very tiny. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tiny bit of glue on that side. 
And then some glue on that side. I put this one down first. Just to make sure that that stays down. And then put this one over the top. And if you've got some like that, like when this corner comes down, make sure you put a little bit of glue there so the whole thing stays together. And then we'll be gluing that when we're ready to send, right? So we've got a nice big envelope there. I'm going to put a couple of labels on this one. Might even be able to get away with getting two labels in the middle of this one. So I have a little bit more space to write since it's so big. And I do believe that if you are making ones that are this big, you got to pay extra postage. So keep, keep in mind how big and how heavy your envelopes are for how much postage you're putting on them as well, because that makes a big difference. So I'm going to put this off to the side so we have it. So what is for an A2 size card, which is a regular size card that most of us make here in the U.S., that is a five and a half by four and a quarter card. And I'll pull out that little guy that we're talking about here. Okay, something like this, A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half. The measurement for this is eight by eight. So let's go ahead and just do a printer paper eight by eight and do some stamping on it. We've got about 20 minutes left. We can actually de design one if we want. <laughs> D. Of all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. That's a good one. So eight by eight, right? Since I can, I know I'm going to be able to use this because most of my cards are A2 size. Oh, Paul, Paula said, no. Eileen said, in Canada, our meal is measured by weight, so it doesn't matter what shape it is. I think ours does matter. It's definitely by weight, but I think that you pay more if it's not a regular size envelope. It's like oversized. Somebody let me know because I rarely send like regular, anything larger than regular mail unless I'm shipping from the store. And in that case, I'm shipping something that's not considered an envelope. It's considered a, like a package. So I'm kind of like out of the loop of sending really big envelopes and stuff like that. Um, we got to stamp this. We need a stamp set. I'm going to use one that I absolutely love by Mamie Made It. And it's this one. It is called Sweet Stuff. Let me just put it on here because I got a bunch of stuff in there for doing masks and stuff. Sweet Stuff, but it's got these little candies and things on it. I really like this one. And I'm going to use this one. And this one. And I really should have put this on a thicker paper just because I like to watercolor it. But I don't have to watercolor this time. I can use markers or something. And I'm going to use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because I think that is the best. Oh, thanks, Patrice. So she says, size does make a difference. There's a guide you can get at the post office. They do not like squares. I think they don't go through the sorter very well. Okay. Good to know. So I'm just going to randomly stamp these sweets all over the page. And just make my own, like, I mean, it's going to be an envelope, but it's like making your own background paper, right? Yeah, I really smashed that one. And do a couple off the page because that makes it look more what they call like organic. I mean, it just makes it look like you purchased it that way instead of making it. Okay, that's good. I'm going to do the round one next. And actually, I'm going to use a smaller 
Where is my small one? I have a little rectangle one this size. It's missing. Oh no, it just fell in. I found it. I found it. There we go. A 21 cent fee for non machinable. That makes sense. So here we go. We're going to add some more of these. I'm not going to color all these. We might just end up having to do a black. I'm not going to have time to color all these, but you know, if I was sending it to somebody that I really love, I probably would color them all. Why not? It's fun. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll color a couple of them. Just keep in mind if you're going to do this too, um, I'm thinking that if you use a really big stamp, like I used, I chose a relatively small one, you know, but if you're going to use any really big stamps and then you, once you fold up your envelope, you're not really going to see the big stamps anymore because once you fold it, you're going to see a lot of the little stamps. Do you see? Like once I fold it. So if you use a really big stamp, like a big, great big flowers, just know that once you fold it all up into the envelope, you're not going to see as much of that. I don't know. If, I'm hoping that makes sense. I'm going to color these, I think, but I'm going to stick to some really simple styles. And um, just so you know, if you smear your VersaFine ink, nine times out of ten, if you catch it right away and it's not a big smear, you can erase it with an eraser. I mention that all the time because I'm constantly touching the ink before it dries. So let me just bring down my Ohuhu markers. I've done a review on these and they're fabulous. So if you're looking for um, a marker set of alcohol markers for blending, this set is 80 markers and it's $40. So it's essentially 50 cents a marker. They are not refillable. They're not fancy. They have the bullet nibs, just like the Spectrum Noirs, and they play well with all the other um, alcohol markers. So it's not it's not a, a kit or a set that you're going to buy and then buy refills and, you know, use them forever and ever. Amen. Um, but it's a great a starter kit, and I absolutely love them. I've been coloring everything with them lately. So I'm just going to pick a color, couple colors. And this is going to bleed straight through because it's just printer paper, but it's going to go onto my mat, so I'm not really that worried about it. And I'm just going to go ahead and color some of these. Just some solid colors. Like if I was going to um, send this out to somebody, I would probably take my time and color these a little bit more um, different colors and take my time and do a lot of shading and stuff like that. But since I'm not, let's go ahead and just add a little bit of color, right? And I'm going to do like pink and blue and then maybe some yellow, maybe some green. Yeah, it's super, super cute stamp set. Love it. I've done a whole, um, what do you call it? I've done a whole like background sheet of this stuff with these little sweets, which made me think of it because I loved it so much. Um, and made it look like the sweets were like uh, standing off the page, like 3D. I'll show you in a, in a second what I'm talking about. Oh, I gotta let my kitty in. Hold on a second. Wine's outside and it's hot. Come on, buddy. Come on. He's a good boy. You, you just had to say hello. I know because the the video was on. I know. I hear you. You didn't want to be left out. I understand. All right, and we'll do some pink. That's cute. Maybe some orange. When I'm coloring, it's really hard for me to keep track of what you guys are saying in the chat. 
And then here comes O'Malley because he thinks he's missing out on something. Which he is because he eats too much. He eats everything. Hey, buddy. No, no, back off. I know, he's sassy. Do some purple. Gotta watch my time, too. We got 10 minutes. Hi, Aunt Beck. We're, um, just, we had just finished up creating a whole bunch of envelopes, DIY envelopes. And now we're creating a DIY envelope, but we're just, um, playing around with some colors and coloring it. Just for the fun of it, to show you that you can, you know, make anything. So let's say I made a card using these. Now I'm using the, um... Now I'm using, I know what I want to say. I just can't say it while I'm looking for a color. Now we're using some stamps to actually like create our own envelope. So let's say I made a card using these, then I made the envelope using these, and everything is all matchy-matchy because that's super fun. This is sort of an orange. And then I think I'm going to add in a little bit of green. I think green would be fun. Just got in from Longhorn Steaks. Ooh. Hey, Penny. Long time no see, girl. Where you been all day? We're just finishing up. Actually, this was a DIY envelope. Um, tutorial, but we finished making all the envelopes and we learned a lot too along the way. So if you're making a circle, making one for a circular card, make sure you add on two or three inches so it fits. And if you're doing um, a regular, what, square or rectangle, you add on one extra inch. And if you're doing regular A2 size cards, which is the easiest, I think, um, it's an eight by eight square. That's it, eight by eight. Wrap it around, put some glue on it, and you're done. This is really acting funny. There we go. User error. Oh, I missed one. Missed one. So now I'm gonna get out of the grays and I'm gonna show you how I made this um, look three dimensional like they are on there three-dimensionally. I'm going to grab a, a light gray and a dark gray. And then basic, basic uh, shading. It doesn't take much. So just take whatever side you feel is going to be the shadow side and just do a shadow. And then I do a little circular motion, but you don't have to. And then just blend it out with the lighter one. That's it. So do that on one side of them. You pick the side, doesn't matter. And then just scribble out over the top of that one with the light one to make it blend out a little bit. Yeah, buddy, what's up? You want to say hello? Oh, my goodness. Is it hot outside? It is, huh? I know it. Do you prefer the air? Uh, me too. Okay. Yeah, Daddy's going to be home in just a little bit. Well, look at that. They're starting, like the ones that I did, they're starting to pop off the page, right? Oh, thank you so much, Dee. It's always my intent to give you something you guys can use to help you be successful. Um, and I make mistakes along the way because this, I mean, I'm human, right? And, um... I'm, I'm a real artist just like you guys. Making my mistakes and learning as I go and just bringing out the good ideas and sharing with you guys. That's what it's all about. And look at them all popping off the page. Love that. Totally love it. It's one of my best things ever. 
Yeah, he never used to be a talker. He, you couldn't even find him. He would just be hiding. Um, now he's getting older and he's got a thyroid issue and he's on medication. And now he's constantly hungry and constantly whining. And I've stuck my finger in the ink because I didn't let it uh, dry. And so I'm just going to erase my little finger marks that I made. And that looks pretty good. Super fun, right? And we do that to every single one of them if we want. Hey, babe. And then eventually we'll make another envelope out of that. And what I tend to do if I'm doing this on 110 pound cardstock, I will get out a blue ink and my paint brushes and I'll do a light wash around all the candy in a light blue to make sure to make it look like they're kind of just floating on a in a kind of like an airy space. It just looks really, really cool. So we have just a few minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and do my, at the end of the video, a little bit of review for you guys. We used a stamp set by May May Made It called Sweet Stuff. Sweet Stuff. So if you want that one, head on over there. If you're looking for anything else, I have it linked at my shop at qualitycrafts.com. Click on the store in the upper right hand corner. And you'll be able to find links to the Ohuhu markers if you want those. Um, so anytime you use one of my Amazon links, I'm an affiliate with Amazon. I make a little tiny bit of bitty commission off of that. And that goes to help the channel stay, stay here so that I'm here with you guys, you know, forever and ever. Amen. I want to be here as long as I possibly can and hopefully do this 100% of the time as my full-time job. And, um, Anytime you use my Amazon links, it doesn't even matter if you buy something crafty. If you're um, an online shopper and you go in through one of my links, then everything and anything that you buy would go towards that. So I thank you guys, all of you guys who are using my links because you really are, and I'm truly grateful. I do want to mention that another reason why my videos can come as often and as much as they do is because of my patrons. So I'd like to announce that I've got two VIP patrons, Deborah Miller and Deb Witt. And also we've got some newbies this week. We've got Cindy Pohl, Hadassah Deramus, Patrice Misek, Alicia Fowler, Rhonda Bryant, Kelly Lees, Tammy Valley, Polly, Paula Harris, and Sharon Walton. So thank you guys so, so much for being around in the patron group. And if you want to be in the patron group as well, all you have to do is go on to patreon.com backslash quality crafts. And there's monthly pledges that start as low as $2 a month. And everybody gets who pledges gets into the private group and um, gets all of the rewards and stuff. Um, so I want to highly encourage you guys to do that. Check out, the, um, check out the store. But also when we're done here, I'm going to make an... Uh, I'm gonna make an album for all of the envelopes that we've created today. So if you guys make some really cool creative envelopes, which I know you will, and some of you guys probably already have while I was talking, um, go over and post them in the album there. If you're not already a part of that group, it is a non-commitment drama-free group where there's no participation police. You will not be kicked out for not participating. You just have to be nice and um, post in the Technique albums, that's always fun. We like to see what everyone's making. So we made a whole bunch of envelopes today. This one's gonna look really cool when it gets on a card. And we decided that if you're gonna do a shape card and it fits the an A2 size card on, if it fits that base, so if you take an A2 size card and it fits on there, you wanna definitely make sure you're doing an eight by eight for that. So that's the general rule an extra inch if you're doing a rectangle card. If you're doing a circle card, you wanna add on two inches or more to make sure that it's gonna cover that entire card. And that's it, super simple, right? No live stream this coming Sunday 
or next week Thursday while I'm on vacation. I don't know about that following weekend yet, but I will always let you know. If you're looking to find out what Quality Crafts doing, what's Jen doing on our channel, you definitely want to be a part of either the Patreon group or the Quality Crafts group on Facebook where I post all of the reminders and updates because a lot of groups don't want you posting that kind of stuff in their group. So you really need to come over to the community and join us there if you wanna know last minute and up to date things that are going on within this community. So that's all we have for you guys today. Is there anything else I need to let you know? Oh, don't forget, Saturday, stick around. Saturday, 9 a.m., it's gonna start the Loopy Hop. Fabulous, fabulous, tons and tons of stamp sets, physical stamp sets for the winner by Newton's Nook, Peachy Keen, and Unity Stamps. You're, go you're not gonna wanna miss this one, you guys. I'm not kidding. There will be an introductory video that I put out. The only way you can do this video, you guys, is if you watch my video to the very, very end and click on the, the link, the annotation, that loops you to the next video, and so on. You have to follow each video to find the next video. It's kinda like a treasure hunt. It's gonna be super cool. So I really hope that you guys will join me for that. And thank you guys so much for being here, all of you guys. Yes, happy vacation. <laughs> There's still be, there'll still be some stuff coming out, so it won't be like I'm completely gone and like off the face of the earth, you know, especially that, um, that loopy hop that's going on. So give great big thanks to my patrons and to all of you guys for being here and making this community possible. I can't wait to see you guys next video.